Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix or firm up wobbly railings like these ones. This problem is typically a result of unsecured railing posts. Decks are one of the places where construction crews work fast and cut corners, and railing attachment is a thing that they frequently shortcut. So, this is how the majority of deck railings are built in my area. The post is notched at the bottom to sit on the deck surface, and it also has a leg hanging down the outside of the rim joist. This leg is then fastened to the rim joist. The reason we're getting a lot of this wobble is that the posts weren't fastened tightly enough. And I'm going to address why that is. But first I want to point out from the beginning that this style of railing is actually no longer code compliant. These days inspectors want to see a full post secured to the inside of the rim joist with carriage bolts running all the way through it. In other words, no notching. But that doesn't change the fact that probably 90% of the decks I see are built in this older fashion. So my goal here is not to get it up to code compliance, which would be almost impossible at this point. Instead, I just want to make sure that these railings are more secure. The simplest, most affordable way to do this is to just add some beefier hardware. Half-inch lag bolts with washers like these. You could also add half-inch carriage bolts, which go all the way through the post and double rim, but there can be impediments to doing this depending on how your deck is built, so I'm going to use lags. A lag bolt is basically just a really big screw. The ones I'm going to use are 5 to 6 inches long, and they have a ceramic coating on them to prevent them from corroding outside. They're exterior grade. In the case of this deck, the builders used one small lag near the top, it looks like a 3 8, 3 8 inch lag, and then they shot in all around it with gun nails. This just isn't strong enough to counteract the leverage that a deck railing creates. What you really want are two lags or carriage bolts in each leg, one high and one low. You want them at least a couple inches apart and slightly offset from one another. This offset is to prevent causing a big grain split in the post, and spacing them high and low is to counteract leverage. Before I install any new ones though, I make sure that the existing ones are tight. Deck lumber can shrink over time and fasteners loosen up, so I use a ratchet to tighten the existing ones down. You probably want to use a larger ratchet, like this half inch wrench, for this project because it takes some force to turn these in. I'll link one of these in the description along with a decent socket set. When the old ones are tightened down, we can start to install the new ones. The key to installing a lag is pre-drilling. You have almost no chance just driving one of these straight in, and it would probably split any narrow lumber you fasten through. Pre-drilling removes some of that material and clears a path for the hardware. The thing is, you want to use a correctly sized bit for this pilot hole, one that clears a path but also leaves enough wood for the lag threads to bite into. There are charts online that specify this bit selection, I'll link one of them below. But for a half inch lag in pine, I want to use a 15 64th bit. Now, I have one of these, but it's not quite long enough to make a 5 inch pilot hole. Instead, I have this longer quarter inch bit, which is a 64th inch larger than desired, but I'm not too worried about that margin, especially because this dry wood is hardened over time, so I'm just going to use this one. I chuck it into my drill, then bore a hole a couple inches below the original and slightly off to one side. Getting the lag started can be a little tricky sometimes, so I found it helps to put the lag point into the pilot hole and drive it with just a few hard taps from a hammer. This will help the threads bite in and get set. I then pick a socket that'll fit the 3 quarter inch head of the lag and lock that into my half inch ratchet. I start to turn it in, but then like always realize that I've forgotten to put the washer on. I don't know why I do that, but it always happens, so I back the lag out, washer goes on, and I start the process over again. I tighten until the washer very gently bites into the post lumber. That's it for the flat posts. With the two lags in now, the post is already firmer. I can do this to the other flat posts in similar fashion, but the corner posts are a little bit different. For the record, I don't like these posts set diagonally to the deck. I prefer to see two posts, one on each side of the corner, and inspectors do too. But again, I've run into this a lot, and the method we're using can also be used for these diagonal posts. The difference is that the washer can't sit flat on this corner angle, so I need to create a pocket for it to sit in. I do this with a spade bit, which is also called a paddle bit. I just pick one slightly larger than the circumference of the washer and chuck it into my drill. Spade bits are aggressive and a little unstable, so you want to be careful when using one. I first bore a quarter inch hole where I want it in the corner. Then I change to the paddle bit and direct the spur on the end of that into the pilot hole. With the drill activated, I gradually let the paddle wings begin to chop their way into the lumber. Rocking it up and down can realign the hole slightly if need be. I bore until the full circumference of the paddle is engaged, then stop. Now the washer can sit in this flat area. 
Because the fastener has to reach a longer distance through the post lumber, I use a 6 inch lag in this case. I turn it in with the ratchet just like all the others and crank it until it's tight. After that I'm all done. Six additional lags are installed, the posts are now less wobbly, and I can be confident that they're safer and more secure. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and possibly sharing. Also, feel free to ask any questions down in the comment section. I always try to respond. Otherwise, keep your eyes open for more Honest Carpenter videos. Thanks, everybody.